They say it's urine mixed with some fluid that they cannot identify. Well, I have identified it and I have told everybody what it really is. And it is an essence that is actually tapping directly into the cerebrospinal fluid, just like we as men tap into the cerebrospinal fluid when we create our sperm. The sperm mm -hmm. essentially is a light source. It's high in potassium, and it is actually a representation of the sun energy. And what happens is when a woman is squirting a lot, what she's doing is she, everybody says she's being empowered. He's giving up. Anytime you lose your natural and your vital fluids, you are not activating anything except exhaustion. You are, you are depleting yourself of your life force. A lot of people who are into sexual magic say that that is the empowering part for a woman. It gives her this much power. But again, when you're dealing with the mathematics of health and the body, the fluids that you lose essentially represent what the body stores as vital force and vital energy. Anytime you exhaust any part of those fluids, you have to re, uh, regenerate. And men, young men, of course, because we could regenerate back in those days when you're 18, 19, 20, and 21, you think that you could bang away and, and give up your seed as much as possible. And then you, know, you, you revive and you regenerate very quickly not realizing that what you're doing essentially is exhausting that particular power, which is connected directly to the cerebrospinal fluid, which is the River Jordan, which empties into the Sea of Galilee, which is where the so-called Christ energy is baptized. Now, um, a lot of women tell me that this was something that naturally happens. No, it never naturally happened. In fact, even back in my book, I speak about the women back in the days, back in uh, the time of the, in the Dravidian time, back in the BCs, women actually manipulated themselves into that particular feeling, into that particular action. And it is not new for women. So everybody says, well, what does that do? It, does it invigorate? Yes, just like any kind of uh, agitating energy invigorates kundalini energy, there is a depletion. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Once you exhaust energy, you have to do, it's depleted and you have to regenerate. For instance, if you got a brother that's buffed up and he's strong, and you see another brother buffed up and strong, and you say, well, those people represent strength. Now, how strong are they? The only way you can tell how strong they are is when they are exhausting their strength. So when these two men get together to battle, they are exhausting their energy and the power that they're showing is actually power being exhausted. So when they're exhausting their power, those same people go to their different corners and they're panting away because they got to catch their breath. Why? Because they're exhausting it. It's the same thing when you shoot your sperm. It's the same thing when she begins to start spurting or squirting. So every time you lose fluids, just like when a woman menstruates, she says, well, you know, uh, you know, the next time I should, you know, eat certain foods and I'll regenerate. Usually when a woman menstruates for four to five days, even for seven yes. days, it takes her really two months. She needs two months to regenerate from that one cycle of menstruation, but she yes. has to do it every time. And she strips away at the lining, which then causes her to become susceptible to all kinds of wound diseases and so forth. The more she menstruates, the more she is susceptible to diseases. So it's, it's funny how uh, people are now lauding this particular act because the more we degenerate as a species, the more we then take on the more um, aggressive forms of, of sensations. We, 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 we attack the body for it to give us that sensation. And that's the problem we've been having uh, with uh, each and every cycle. If you notice, we are degenerating as a species. We're getting more homosexual. We're getting more uh, confusion about what they are and so forth. So I'd just like to say, you know, if you want to squirt, squirt. You know, if you want to go ahead and bang away, bang away. But there is going to be a penalty. And you're going to feel it as you get older. Now, can I segue? <clears throat> because this is the perfect topic. And what we're speaking about is actually Kundalini rising and you know chakra activation so what i learned 
uh, in the early 2000s through your tutelage and you know other massive teachers in the community I learned about ejaculation and that conversation has come up a lot in our community but you know we had a lot of uh, training and teachers and you know people that can point us in particular directions I hear a lot of people just speaking about it the process that you're speaking about in terms of women squirting and men ejaculating would ejaculation be a methodology that you would prescribe to say the community needs to learn more about that right now, retain the seed and creating a microcosmic orbit to charge it up. Like you said, those are 144 times so we get to redemption. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. Um, I speak about ejaculation, but that's something that takes a lot of, I would say internal power. Yes. I used to practice it very much, you know, I, I think I, I pretty much didn't get as much wrinkles. And what happens is the more ejaculation you do, the younger you stay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's what uh, it keeps your youth. The more you give up that seed, the more you take your, you take years from your future. You are tapping into your future and you are robbing your future in order to pay Paul in the present. So uh, yes, ejaculation or what do you call, it's a, a breathing technique that deals with Raja yoga as well as prana yoga. And there is a, uh, something called karitsa, which is learning how to use the breath. And there is the third vertebrae right here, where at the time of having sex, you can compress this particular point. There's a point right above here on the third vertebrae up. There is a point here where you press a nerve point here and your order comes right down that need to ejaculate immediately becomes uh, subverted. There are different ways, of course, underneath the penis, as the, uh, there's a swelling uh, coming from, uh, uh, that is in the area from the anus, going directly into the bottom half of the shaft. There's a way that you can press your fingers against that point at the point of uh, ejaculation, and, it's up, and it uh, short circuits that feeling to ejaculate. So yeah, there are ways for you through breathing, especially learning the crane bill or dealing with the crow's bill, getting the, uh, the air into your body as fast as possible. So you can, uh, if some people can't do this and what it does is it concentrates uh, a, a, a stream of air to cool the body down so that you can actually maintain and through the uh, manipulation and doing uh, muscular contractions, you can actually absorb the essence of the woman's of, of fluids into the shaft itself through the breath. And this is a technique that they teach the yogis in order so that they, uh, they can uh, have the pleasure uh, of uh, sex without losing their force. In fact, they become invigorated when they have sex in that manner and they get up stronger than weaker, rather mm -hmm. than weaker. 